Hi, my name is Sergio Farragut. I'm a developer advocate at Imply. Um, my focus is the Apache Druid project, and uh, we've been working on another open source project that uh, I want to show you. Um, this is uh, uh, essentially a, st a full stack uh, that runs on a laptop that includes Kafka, it includes Druid, uh, it's pre-configured to run in that small scale, uh, it includes Jupyter Notebooks, and it includes a data generation service. Uh, so without further ado, let me uh, show you what it's about. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, cloning a repo. And this is the new Learn Druid repo, which includes the Docker Compose I've been talking about. Um, so let's start there. So we clone the repo, then go to the repo directory. And uh, with a very simple command, you get everything running and you can start learning, learning Druid. So here we go, Docker Compose. But let's talk about what it built. Um, so let me bring up the Docker desktop view uh, and show you. So this is the Docker Compose. It includes Jupyter, uh, so it's running Jupyter Lab. It includes uh, Drew, everything Druid needs, like Zookeeper, Postgres for the metadata repo. Uh, it includes Kafka, a single no, uh, pod of Kafka uh, running, a single broker, uh, and all the Druid stuff, the coordinator, the router, the broker, the middle manager, and the historical. So what can we do with this stack? Uh, so if you go to the project, you'll, you'll see the, the same instructions I, I just went through uh, right there in the uh, readme for the project. The project is at uh, GitHub, uh, implied data, learn-druid. Uh, I'll provide a link in the uh, descriptions. Um, so what you need to do is just open a tab now in localhost. 8889 to get to Jupyter Lab. You because we have Druid running, we can also interact directly with directly with the Druid console at port 8888. So there's Druid running right there. Um, but what I want to show you is Jupyter Lab. Um, so we've been working on a set of notebooks uh, that describe uh, at least the basics. Uh, in some cases, more advanced stuff, but the, the basics of uh, doing ingestion, both streaming and batch ingestion in Druid. Uh, different uh, different uh, examples of how to query Druid, how to use approximations, uh, how Druid uh, does aggregation, um, and then how to dru use the Druid API directly. And finally, a folder on contributing where we have a template for if you want to add your own notebooks and uh, help us uh, explain uh, Druid to the community, uh, we more than welcome any contributions. Um, so I'll, I'll just walk here through a couple of examples. Um, the introduction uh, notebooks uh, walk you first through uh, the Druid API package. So the Druid API package is a simple um, wrapper around the REST APIs that uh, you normally use to interact with Druid. So it makes it simpler uh, to interact with Druid from, uh, from Python. Um, so that, uh, that notebook walks you through all of the different uh, functionality in that Druid API package. Um, so you should have a look at that just to see what, the, what you can do with Druid with this. Um, also, we have uh, an introduction to the data generator service that's running uh, on this stack. Um, so it'll show you things like, um, here, let me actually get it started and show you. So the initialization, um, so the data generation uh, also works as a server that's, uh, that takes uh, REST APIs, right? So we interact uh, with it through the REST APIs. In this case, we're just trying to see uh, what configurations it has. So this shows the list of pre-configured data generation um, um, configurations. Um, and uh, so we have some clickstream examples. We're looking to build out more examples of data generation so that we can stream data of any type uh, very easily from this project. So we welcome, uh, you know, different configurations for different data schemas and different data distributions. Um, um, if you want to, uh, if you want to add more, um, you can generate the data uh, to a file. So you can use this data generator to generate a file of X number of rows and just uh, keep it in the uh, in the data generation pod so that you can then ingest it from there into Druid. And the, the notebook shows you how to do that. Uh, you can also do streaming. Um, well, where's the streaming down here? Um, so you can also use, uh, well, I said custom configurations to generate data. There's an example of a custom configuration. Um, and then how to 
use the data generated to do live streaming of events into the Kafka pod that we have here and then how to ingest that into Druid and test the end-to-end, -end, you know, from publishing all the way through uh, calculating analytics on Druid uh, directly on this stack. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we have a very simple uh, environment or simple to start environment where you just uh, run the Docker Compose, uh, it starts up and we walk you through a series of notebooks uh, to teach you the basics of Druid and uh, probably more advanced stuff as, uh, as this project evolves. So uh, give it a shot. Uh, one, one last thing before I go. Uh, how to shut it down. Uh, so docker compose, uh, same command, profile all services, all services, down. Um, that'll bring everything down. And if you want to remove all the volumes from uh, Docker, this is a trick I learned that's quite useful. You do a minus V and it cleans the whole environment. So if you're working with this and you're you know, working on multiple sessions and you still want your whatever you've ingested of data or whatever work you've done to still be there, you don't use the minus V, you just bring it down, bring it back up, your data's still there, you can continue working with it. Or if you want a clean environment, you want to refresh and, and, and start from scratch, you do a minus V and it removes all the volumes and the next time you bring, uh, you bring in the stack up, it'll start from scratch. Um, <clears throat> so that's all I had for you. Uh, Hope you uh, try it out and uh, let us know what you think. Thank you.